Welcome back to Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 with the New Hampshire Wildcats. Uh, it's time for us to start looking into next year as we dropped a we dropped our Elite Eight matchup to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets last season. Our first, our second trip to the NCAA tournament in four years. Uh, the first time we have ever won an NCAA tournament game, we beat Boise State. We beat number four Arizona in the round of 32. We beat Oklahoma in the Sweet 16, and then fell to Georgia Tech. So we finished the season 29 and six and ranked 16th in the country. So we're going to sim ahead, and we're going to sim up to, uh, I guess, the season end and, and see what happens. So we got to play through the rest of the tournament schedules. Just keep simming along here. Connecticut destroys Appalachian State in the NIT. Syracuse defeats Tulsa. Nevada beats UConn. And we're going to have to look at recruiting in a moment as well. Do that right now. I don't really have... Oh, I don't have to do anything yet. I, and I don't have a lot of money to spend, so I can't... Um, although I do have a third scholarship, so we may as well offer it to somebody and see if we can land uh, another, another player. Um... Let's. I don't think any of these guys have any interest in us, and we can't visit them even when we have the opportunity to do it. We won't be able to afford it. Um, but let's go all in. Let's offer six ten Hugh Barry a scholarship. Number twenty four, number one hundred twenty four ranked overall in the nation. Kansas beats Duke. Is that the championship game or is that the final four? I guess we'll see in a second. Belisario Rasmussen. That's a great name. Villanova defeats Kansas for the NCAA tournament. I think that was the final, right? Yeah, Villanova is your uh, are your NCAA champions. All right, so let's take a look at the awards. Block your ears. It's about to get noisy. <laughs> Let's take a look at Conference Q. Scotty Rosen, Player of the Year. Alex Burks, so our two seniors. Scotty Rosen, Player of the Year. Alex Burks, Defensive Player of the Year. And we win the Coach of the Year. First Team All-Conference, Rosen and Joe Petaway picks up the All-Conference Honors at center. Second Team, nothing. And I have to sneeze. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and continue. We got a message. Hopefully that's a letter of intent. We have three messages, actually. Bill Harrion retired. I think we're going to have to resign all of our um, staff. I don't think we have anybody. Yeah, we're gonna have to resign our entire our entire staff. That's fine though. I'm not interested in another job. So it's time to improve our coaching staff a little bit. And uh, when we have our our end of the season call with the board, we'll have to ask for more money because we are gonna need more money. Uh, Esteban Carraza signed a letter of intent, so that's fantastic. Uh, Carraza is. Um, 6'6", 202-pound power forward out of Argentina. 18 points, 18.5, 7.5. Looks like he's going to be good defensively, decent inside shooter. Not That doesn't do much else well, but move his feet. And which is, I mean, it's understandable that he's not a great rebounder as a 6'6 power forward, but a good defender, good inside shooter. So that'll be nice on the inside. We have to hire some staff. So let's look. Uh, let's look at our first assistants first, and let's go after. 
Who do we want to go after? Corey McRae, I think, is the better. He's more well-rounded. So make him our first assistant. We'll offer him 27.5. And we need a second assistant now, so we want someone who's good at recruiting. Tyler Murray. 20 grand a year. And third assistant. Player development is what I would prefer. Perry Thomas. Let's see if he'll take 17. We don't have a ton of money. See, we only have $147,000 for the budget, so we, and that, I think, includes my contract, so we need to be a little bit careful. Let's see if we can land any of these guys. Nope. And it doesn't even look like any of them are even available anymore. Yeah. Well, Tyler Murray's still there. So Tyler Murray as my... Ah, oh, shoot. This is where I screwed up, so... Yeah. All right, I see what I did wrong. Um... All right. So Perry Thomas was... All right, let's offer Tyler Murray our second assistant job at 25 a year. Not 250, 25. 25 a year for three years. And then we need to offer somebody as a third assistant. I want someone who's good at player development. And that's, okay, that's where we had Perry Thomas. So we need to find a first assistant is what we need to find. And then we can go back. Armand Gates, I want... No, he makes a little bit more than I'd like to pay. He's old. Yeah, this guy looks decent. So Cannon Cunningham, we'll offer him uh, 25000 to be our first. And then our third assistant will be... Or we'll offer Perry Thomas 18 a year to be our third assistant oh come on do this the right way do this the right way make him the first all right so cannon cunningham the first tyler murray the second perry thomas the third all right let's see if we can sign any of them i want to get on with this process So we got Perry Thomas as our number three. So it's a start. Cannon Cunningham still available. He is. Is Tyler Murray still available? He is. Nothing. Cannon Cunningham signed with Delaware. So we're going to have to find a new number one. Uh, okay. And I really, I just don't want to spend a lot of money on my coaching. I'm not entirely sure how it affects things. So let's go with Ryan Madry. Let's see if we can sign him. He wants 18, so let's see if he'll take 25 for three years to be our number one. So we still need Murray. Murray is, is I'm hoping we can land him because of his recruiting ability. No. Is he still there? He is. No. 
nothing. Well, this is tedious. Nothing. Keep simming along. Yes, I know my team has coaching vacancies. I'm trying to sign them. Are they both still there? Okay, so Tyler Murray is gone. Uh, all right, well, let's just spend some money and get it done, I guess. Not really crazy about the idea, but, um, you know, I don't know what else to do, and I don't want to sit here and do this all day. All right, so we offered Madry and Reggie Brunson. Sucks. I mean, I was able to win with one star coaches at every position, so I, I mean if 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 it comes down to it, I'll just find some one star or some, some lower level guys and just make the offers. In fact, that's what I think I'm going to do because I don't want to sit here and do this. Frankly. All right. We signed our coaches. I'm not crazy about the end result. We spent a ton of money. Um, and none of them are very good. But I just needed to get it done. Um, my best coach is probably my third assistant. But it is what it is. I don't really care. So meeting with the board, we need to increase the budget. That section really frustrated me. Sorry if I sound annoyed, but that was really, really tedious and stupid. Like there's got to be a better way to determine who, um, who, uh, uh, like what they actually want and what the other offers are. So good. So our request was approved. So we made an extra. So we got an extra ten thousand dollar budget. So that's good. Uh, end of the season. I think we're gonna end up. Yeah, we can't recruit people. We only got the one. We only got the one recruit. Um, we're still waiting on these guys. I don't think anything's gonna happen with them. So I think our final two scholarships are gonna go to transfers. So we'll advance to next season. And I'll do what I normally do, which is advance to the off season, see, try to pick up a couple of transfers, and then we'll sim ahead to the start of the season. We'll play the first game of the year, and then we'll call it an episode. All right, so we're back. It's the beginning of the next season. We have six messages. Skip the summer, scouting report, scheduling notice, recruiting class. We only had one recruit, so we're going to be way down the list. Yeah, 277th. We didn't land either of those other recruits. I don't know what happens to them if they sign with somebody else or, or what the deal is, but we should be in conference P. It's a shame we only moved up one, but it is what it is. So let's buy our reports. Yeah, see, we still don't. We, we have about 10 grand less than we normally do, so... Uh, we're going to stick to the Atlantic East report. We'll advance. A couple messages. So we should have two scholarships to offer to some transfers. Now we got we have some unhappy players. Why do we have so many unhappy players? The hell's the deal? I don't know what the deal is. Maybe I need to call some of these guys and tell them I love them. I, I don't know. All right. Now let's look here. Players transferring. We don't have anybody transferring, which is good. Last year we did lo lose that one recruit. Let's see what we have here. 
And I always like to look at... Oh, this guy's good. He's a junior, though, so we'd only have him for one year. Simon Rattle is going to be very good defensively. Dixon, good outside shooter. So let's see who averaged the most points per game. So Oliver out of, is that Purdue? Let's contact him. And I think right away I want to scholarship offer rattle. And let's advance and see if we can sign him. So we're going to need a big man. This is Petaway's senior season, so we will need a uh, we will need a um, uh, big man. Uh, transfers. Come on, Simon. We want you to come to our school. Uh, points per game. Bender, we don't know anything about him. Harmon went to Binghamton. Except these guys are all... We don't know if they're garbage. So let's contact, let's contact, let's contact all three of them. Oh, two of them are uh, international recruits. We tend to do pretty well with internationals. Let's see what happens. I don't want to just offer somebody a contract sight unseen. Still nobody. Rattle's still there. He appears to still be on the list. Except he's not. All right, well, that sucks. All right, uh... All right, Gleb Sedelnikov. We'll offer him a scholarship. And then we're just going to go sight unseen, and we're going to offer Harmon a scholarship. And let's see how that goes. A couple messages. Harmon and Sedelnikov both came to our team, so that's good. He's not very good. Sedelnikov is. So all right. So now I'm going to sim ahead to sim ahead through the rest of this offseason, get to um, the start of next year, and we'll go from there. So I will be right back. All right, we are back. Uh, we got to handle red shirts, um, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, we weren't able to land any recruits. You should have seen the number of people that I offered contracts to that ended up going elsewhere. Uh, the good news is that we've started to attract the attention of some five-star recruits. Uh, they ended up not signing with us, but uh, we had some five-star and a whole bunch of four-star that we just couldn't lock down. Um, so it's a good, uh, it's a good start. And now we got to take a look at, um, red shirting. So we're not going to red shirt O'Neal. We can't red shirt O'Neal and Henderson. Uh, we red shirted them last season. Um, it might be Carraza because we'll play. I mean, these are our start. This is our starting five right here: Parker, Petaway. Well, not Harmon; he's a transfer. So Carter, Pyluzic, Petaway, Parker, and Carter Roy, I guess, will be our starting lineup. Uh, then we'll have Lazaro, Cook, O'Neill, Henderson. Yeah, we don't have a very good bench this year, which is a bit of a concern. But um, 
you know, next year we got a couple of transfers coming in. Um, maybe Kennedy. We don't really need him. And it might be good to have him as backup in case, well, when we lose Petaway. So, well, we can't redshirt him. Uh, is there anybody? Patrick Haynes. I think he's a walk-on, right? Yeah, he's a walk-on. So really, it's it's Carraza or Montgomery, and I think maybe we go Montgomery. Although Carraza is just not very good right now at anything. Montgomery can at least shoot, and Cook Parker and Petaway are gonna play, and Lazaro are gonna play most of the time at power forward. So I think we're going to redshirt Esteban Carraza this season. Give us an extra season out of him. We'll advance in terms of recruiting. We'll set our our roster. We'll play our first game, and then that will be the end of the episode. And if the beginning of this was, if I sounded crabby, I apologize. Like I said, that that coaching portion is it's just not enjoyable uh, because it doesn't give you any information. You offer them a contract and you don't get any answer at all as to whether or not they're going to take it. So you just keep offering the contract and it just sucks. So, uh, depth. What does it say we should do? Wow. It wants Carter, Montgomery, Pelusic, Parker, and Cook. All right. Well, no. Petaway is my starter. So we're going to do this like we always do. All right, so first things first. Oof, we've got some stars on the sideline here, guys. It's going to be an interesting season. Uh, Montgomery, he's a pretty good shooter. But I think we're going to go big this year, so we're going to do this. We have our ball handler in, and we're basically we're gonna go with a three-man backcourt and a three-man frontcourt. So we're gonna play basically seven players or eight players. It'll be these five, then Montgomery, Lazaro, and Cook will be um, are gonna play most of the game for us. So how are we gonna do this? So at the eight-minute mark, we will bring in Cook to play center, and then play power. Nope, like this. Power forward, and then same deal here. So center, he'll come in here. He'll come in there, and then he'll come in here and play power forward. Yeah, and then that and my phone is beeping all over the place i apologize and we'll do that and then in the back court we're gonna do this so we're gonna bring montgomery in here to play shooting guard then we'll bring him in here to play point guard like that and then Shooting guard, shooting guard, shooting guard, point guard, point guard. Nope, I'm going to do that. No, I think we'll do that. So 30, 30, okay. And then small forward, Lazaro will come in and play like that. Yeah, we're going to have to go heavy with our starters this year. So Pilusic is going to get um, is going to get the most minutes. He's going to be our probably our best scorer this year. 
Um, I have a, we're going to have a difficult time offensively, I think. Um, but I think we'll be pretty good defensively. So we'll do that. I'd like O'Neal to get some minutes. Maybe we do this. Like this. And then... So that doesn't make any sense, though. That doesn't make any sense to take to, to do that. Let's do this. Let's do that. Yeah, that's better. And then he can play a couple of nope. Play a couple of minutes there. And then he can come back in there. Yeah, I think that works. So let's store that. That gets O'Neal, um, who has the potential to be really good, some playing time. Uh, and then it gives our really our seven best players, our starters, and then Montgomery and Cook, um, the majority of – can I move – maybe Parker can move to small forward for some of this as well. So maybe we can do this. Um, I don't want to take Pilusic out. Yeah, so we'll run with this. That's fine. All right, so our first game of the year is a... We're in the Y2K Classic. We're going to be taking on the Clemson Tigers. So let's uh, play this one and see how we do. I'm not... this. I, 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 I have a feeling this is going to be a down year for us, uh, having lost... Um, Scotty Rosen, our, our best scorer, but we'll see. So let's go to the tip. And let's see how it goes. Hopefully we can play some solid defense and, and some of our some of our players can get hot and Petaway gets a bucket there to put us up 2 nothing. Missed the and one, but that's okay. Three-pointer from Carter Roy puts us up 5 nothing early on. Make it 7 nothing. A good start to the season, or a good start to the first half, I guess. One out of two at the line for Clemson. Petaway gets two free throws. Another three-pointer from Carter Roy. He's got six. Turnover there. It's 12-3. Another three-pointer for Carter Roy. He's got nine. Misses that one as he goes for the heat check three-pointer. So good start here early on. 15-3 to three as we lead at Clemson. There's a missed three-pointer by Montgomery. His first attempt of the year. Another three-pointer attempt. No good, but Cook gets the rebound and puts it back. Clemson hits a three. Cook in the paint again for two. 19-6. UNH with the lead. One out of two at the line. Parker misses both free throws. That's okay. Montgomery goes down and he gets the alley oop to put us up 21 to 7 midway through the first half. 21 8. There's a jumper by Parker. Twenty-three to ten now. Turnover by the Cats. Make it twenty-three twelve. There's a three-pointer from Cook from the top of the key. The big man showing some range. 29-12 as Montgomery drills a three-pointer. 
There's a missed three by Piluzic. Clemson gets an and one opportunity, but they miss. And then Carter Roy comes down and hits another three-pointer. 32-14, to 14, UNH. Make it 34-14 to 14 as Montgomery throws it down with two hands. Clemson gets a three. Two missed free throws by Petaway and another three-pointer by Clemson. Another missed three-pointer by us. They get the rebound, turn it over, and then Henderson goes down and lays it up and in. 36-20 UNH with five minutes left in the first half. Missed foul line jumper. Offensive rebound there for Clemson. Turnover. Three-pointer by Carter Roy is no good. Rebound opportunity no good. Clemson hits the three to get within 13. And there's a jumper by Ike Carter, his first two points of the game. Clemson gets a pair back on free throws. We turn it over again. 38-25 UNH basketball with a 13-point lead. Missed shot. Clemson gets the rebound. Looking to get the lead within 10. They can't, at least on that possession. And they do now as they hit a three-pointer. And then we come back. Ike Carter hits a three to put us back up 13. Big shot by Carter as Clemson was starting to make a bit of a run. Turnover, and it's 41-30. to 30. Free throw attempt is no good. We're up 13 with 30 seconds left in the first half. Missed three-pointer. We come down looking for that last shot. And we don't get, we don't make it, but we go into halftime with a 43 to 30 lead over Clemson. So we'll start on the Clemson side of the ball. Uh, Price led the way from their starters with six points. He had nine rebounds as well. D Lavillo, D Lavio, D Lavio had five points. Uh, Vershaw had four, Davis with two. Maselio off the bench had eight points, five rebounds. Seals had four and four. French scored, had a point. King. Valtau Price played and didn't score. For us, it was the Carter Roy Show. 16 points, hit four three-pointers in the first half. 16 points, three rebounds. Uh, Petaway, four points, three rebounds. Ike Carter came on a little bit at the end of the first half, had five points. Parker and Piluzic each had a bucket. Cook and Montgomery did exactly what I wanted them to do off the bench. They each scored. Uh, Cook had seven points, three rebounds, assist and a steal. Montgomery had seven points, four rebounds. So nice bench performance there. Uh, we shot 50% from the field, seven of 16 from behind the line, and we were only two of eight from the foul line. That's not good. They were 10 of 36 shooting, 5 of 19 from behind the arc. They out-rebounded us 27 to 18. Uh, we only turned it over three times. They turned it over nine times. So going to halftime with a 13-point lead. And we get the basketball to start the second half. Parker in the paint with the bucket there to put us up 15 here early on. Turnover by Clemson. Turnover by UNH. Missed three-pointer. Missed shot. We get the offensive rebound, though, and then that pass is turned over. Two free throws for Clemson. And Je uh, Carter Roy hits another jumper, giving him 18 in this one. Roy is fouled. And the pass is stolen, and it's a 12-point game as Piluzic hits a big three-pointer to put us up 50-35. to 35. Two more free throws for Clemson. Petaway has his shot blocked. We get it back. Petaway with the baseline jumper, no good. 50-37, to 37, UNH missed three-pointer by Montgomery. 50 to 38. They get the offensive rebound on the missed free throw, and it's 50 to 40. So Clemson's trying to make a game of this as Piluzic hits another three. So that was a big shot. Missed three pointer there. Deep three by Montgomery. He hits that one from well behind the line. We're up 56 43. Another three pointer by Montgomery. 
Youngster showing up here in his first game. Turnover by the Cats. Clemson gets a layup. They're within 14 now. Missed jumper by Montgomery. 59-45, midway through the second half. UNH basketball and Piluzic hits a three. We are a three-point shooting team this season, apparently. As Cook gets into the basket, gets to, into the rim and gets that one to go for two. Looking for a shot. We get it by Parker. He misses. 64-45 UNH. Two free throws by Clemson. There's a missed jumper by O'Neal. Two more free throws by Clemson. And O'Neal gets the baseline jumper that time. It's his first basket. So things are looking good here in our opening game. As Petaway takes that one with two hands, puts us up 18 with seven minutes left. Make it a 21-point game as Piluzic hits another three-pointer. 71-51, UNH. Missed shot. We get the offensive rebound, though. Turnover by the Cats. The 2K Classic. We're going to get our first preseason tournament victory here, it looks like. So we're up 19 with just under six minutes to go. Up 22 as Ike Carter hits it from the top of the key. There's a missed jumper. A missed jumper for Clemson. There's another missed three for Carter Roy, who is settled down here in the second half after scoring 16 first half points. 74 to 52 with three and a half left. Clemson hits a three to get him within 19. And Lazaro misses the shot there. Another missed shot. We get the offensive rebound, though. Deep three-pointer from Ike Carter is good. 22-point UNH lead. Two minutes remaining. 77-55. There's a missed three-pointer. Missed shot. Clemson with the board. Missed two free throws, but to get the offensive rebound. There's a missed shot. We're under a minute left. 77-58 is the score. And we are going to hold on to beat the Clemson Tigers. Two free throws by Petaway. Down to the final 10 seconds. Missed shot at the buzzer. And we hammer the Clemson Tigers. 79-58. to For Clemson, they were led by Price, who had a double-double. 14 points, 12 rebounds, 3 blocks. DeLavio had nine. Vershaw with four. Davis, two. Collins had a point off the bench. Massiello had 14 points. King had five. French had three. Seals had four. Valto had two. Simpson, Walton, McCaskill, Price played and didn't score. They only shot 26% for the game, 23% from behind the arc, and they were 18 of 27 from the foul line. They turned the ball over 13 times. They did out-rebound us, however, 44 to 37. For us, we were led by Carter Roy, who had 18, 16 of those in the first half. Alvin Piluzic with 12 in the second half, had a really nice second half for us. Uh, Carter, Ike Carter with 11 points, 4 rebounds. Joe Petaway, 8 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists. Keith Parker making his first start, 4 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists. Montgomery had a beautiful game off the bench. Uh, his first game as a Wildcat, 13 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals. Cook had a nice game off the bench as well, 9 points, 4 rebounds. O'Neal played, scored 2 points. Lazaro, Kennedy, Henderson, Haynes all played and didn't score. We shot 47% from the field, 15 to 29 from behind the 3-point line, and we were only 3 of 10 from the foul, 4, 4 of 10 from the foul line, and we only turned the ball over 9 times. So good start to our season. So... I guess what I'll do is come back and we'll uh, we'll let's see who we're playing in the next round of the tournament. I guess we're not going to play that game now. I've uh, I've hit my limit. I need to, need to take a pause here. We'll just see who we're playing and then move on. Don't know who we're playing yet. Grand Canyon, nice. 
So we are playing Grand Canyon from Conference L, but that will be next time. So until next time, uh, everybody take care. Please leave a like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts, and uh, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.